We often see peace as something bigger than ourselves, as something monstrous and abstract that is not only intimidating, but seems unattainable to the point where achieving world peace has become a cliche. Can we achieve peace through our daily actions or acts of kindness? How powerful are acts of kindness? Can kindness be a vehicle to achieve peace in a society like ours? Well, let's examine. When was the last time you did something nice for someone else? For instance, open a door to a stranger. How did that make you feel? When was the last time somebody did something nice for you? For instance, offer you a genuine smile. How did that make you feel? When was the last time you saw someone do something nice for someone else? For instance, give food to a homeless person in the street. How did that make you feel? A random act of kindness is doing something nice for someone without expecting anything in return. Whenever an act of kindness takes place, three people benefit. The giver, the receiver, and the spectator. Throughout the years, I've been lucky enough to experience kindness in these three different capacities in my involvement with Operación Pupusa. Operación Pupusa is one, of the, is one of the largest food drives in San Salvador on Christmas Day. Throughout the years, we've distributed over 30,000 kits of basic needs and pupusas to underserved communities and homeless around El Salvador. Now, let me walk you through three of these experiences. Let's start with the givers. So picture this. It's the 24th of December. Everyone has something to do on Christmas Day, whether it's running that last minute errand, getting that last minute gift, you name it. You probably don't have two to three minutes, let alone two to three hours to do something nice for someone. That is the uphill battle that every Operación Pupusa volunteer goes, goes through. Throughout the years, we've been able to rally over 3,000 volunteers who come to share one of the things that's most difficult to share at a time like Christmas, their time. We started with less than 50 volunteers. We now have over 250 hands helping out and sharing this valuable moment with the, most, with the people most in need. Now, why do volunteers keep coming back? You might not know this, but kindness is in fact chemical. Evidence shows that whenever you perform an act of kindness, it increases the production of certain chemicals in your body, also known as the happy chemicals. These happy chemicals make you feel happier, calmer, and healthier. Therefore, we can say that the reason why so many volunteers keep coming back is because of how this experience makes them feel. We then have the receivers, like Brian's mother. But before I get into Brian's story, I want to give you a bit of context. So despite the goodwill and good intentions behind Operación Pupusa, we've been recurrently challenge to think about the impact of our activity, as many people have questioned, how is distributing a kit of food going to change the reality of our country? But when I see myself doubting the impact be behind activities like this, I think about Brian's message. And the message read, read as follows. Operación Pupusa friends, I want to personally thank you for the gift and happiness you brought to my mother. She was selling goods in the Bolivar Park, and your arrival has brought her to tears of joy. This act reminded her that God loves her more than she thinks, and that he will never leave her side. We hope that you continue to spread these blessings throughout. Thank you, and, have, and Merry Christmas. Now, when I, when I think about these, when, when I think about Brian, I really realized that beyond distributing kids, we distribute hope, we distribute peace, we distribute happiness. Opportunities to be kind are everywhere, whether it's in our home, at work, while driving, with your family, with your friends, coworkers, strangers, you name it. Brian's story reminds us that small actions and small acts of kindness can go a long way. Lastly, we have spectators, like Nicole. She's actually in the audience right now. 
Nicole heard about Operación Pupusa and she immediately reached out. She was so inspired by what she saw that she was compelled to act. We had not even we had not even met Nicole yet, and she had already rallied a troop of volunteers. She had organized several fundraising activities, and she had convinced her school director to get the school involved. Three years later, Nicole is now a very valuable member of our team. When I think of Nicole, I think of myself eight years ago when I first started my journey in Operación Pupusa. Experiencing the gratefulness and happiness behind every life we touched was enough for me to continue my journey 10 years later. This is a true example of how contagious kindness can be. And there's actual scientific evidence to back this up. Evidence shows that whenever somebody sees you perform an act of kindness, it increases the chances of that person paying it forward. Now I use these three examples to showcase the impact of kindness, but I'm pretty sure everyone here has experienced kindness in, these, in any of these three different capacities, whether it was being the giver, the receiver, or the spectator. And you might be thinking, okay, I get it, kindness is contagious, it makes you feel better. And small actions go a long way, but how does that come together with peace? Now I want to start by answering some of the questions I made in the beginning. I strongly believe that we can achieve peace through our daily actions and acts of kindness. I believe acts of kindness are extremely powerful and that they can become a vehicle to achieve a peace in a society like ours. The reality is, though, that 28 years have passed since the signing of the peace accords and we continue to be one of the most violent countries in the world. Violence is not only executed by gang members, Violence is all around us, in the way we treat our peers, in the way we react to situations. The reflection of a society can be traced back to the way in which its individuals behave. What do your actions reflect when you look in a mirror? Are you being part of the problem or are you being part of the solution? A couple months ago, I did a survey to pick on people's brains behind what they thought about kindness and its relation to peace. 80 percent of the people surveyed said that they agreed that their actions greatly influenced peace building. However, when they were asked how they put this into practice, there was a big gap between the theory and the practice. Although we had a lot of interesting st statistics, there's one in particular that really caught my attention. And that is that 49 of the people surveyed usually don't respect the ideas of others. How do we expect to live in a peaceful society when we're not even able or capable of doing the bare minimum? Just look at social media comments on a controversial issue. It's a war zone. If we, ex if we want to live in a peaceful society, we need to become more conscious and coherent with our actions. We need to walk the talk. We need to roll up our sleeves and take matters into our own hands. What you do matters, even the little things. People take what you say and what you do with them in the way they react to situations and in, in the way they treat people in the future. There's a really good quote by Mother Teresa that captures the impact of small actions and she says, we often feel that what we do is just a drop in the ocean, but that ocean would be less without that missing drop. I encourage every one of you here to become that drop that Mother Teresa talks about. And through kindness, let us create that ripple effect that will bring peace to our country and society. Let's make humankind proud and become kind humans. Let's change the narrative. Starting today, you have 342 opportunities to do so. The ball's on your court now. What's your next move going to be? Thank you.